So this is how a combi boiler works. So we've got a gas pipe. Gas comes into the boiler. Into this thing called the gas valve. And the gas valve will open to allow gas to come in to the fan. As the fan runs, it will suck in fresh air, which comes from outside, from the outside of the flue, and then through the end of here to the end of the fan. So the fan will be mixing air and the gas together. It'll send it up to the burner. So this is the burner. So the gas will come out of here. And these are the electrodes. The electrodes will make a spark which will light the gas up. Now as the gas burns, it may, turns into carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and water. The hot gas will go up and out through the flue. And the water will condense, a lot of the water will we say condense and they'll drip down through here into the condensate trap and go outside through this pipe. This is the main heat exchanger. So this is where the gas is being burned. And you can see around here, there are lots of pipes and waterways full of water, which is being heated by the gas. So if you have a look here, we have a pump. The pump what the pump does is circulates the water. So the pump will push the water up through this pipe and around and around the heat exchanger where it'll get heated. Then it'll come down this pipe into this, which is the diverter valve. So it'll go through the diverter valve and then down this pipe, which will go to your radiators. It'll go through the radiators, in through one side, through and out through the other side. This is the return pipe. Then it will return back into the pump and keep on going around. Now, as we heat water, water expands as it's heated and it needs somewhere to expand to. So this thing is the expansion vessel, which is full of air. It's like a car, car tire on the top. So as the water heats up, it'll expand into here. And as it cools down, it will, it will contract again, if you like. Now, if there is no air in here, or not enough air, or it's not big enough, there won't be enough space for the water to expand. So instead of the water expanding, the pressure will rise up instead. So use pressure gauge to connect it in to the side of the diverter valve. So if the pressure rises up above three, you have this safety device or pressure relief valve which will open up and allow water to escape sorry to outside now if we open a hot tap this will allow cold water to come into the boiler and then out of the boiler so the cold water comes in up through here and there is a sensor here, which is just a little magnet that spins around. And then this sensor will notice the magnet spinning and tell the boiler that the water is being run. So the water will go in to this thing at the back. Cold water will go in here, which is a plate heat exchanger. And then it'll go out through the hot pipe to the taps. When the boiler notices the water is being run, this thing is the diverter motor, will move the diverter valve. So what this does, the water that normally comes from the heat exchanger down into the diverter valve, into the radiators, will now go through the plate heat exchanger and then back to the pump, around the main heat exchanger, back down through the plate heat exchanger. Now the water, the heated water, is separated from the cold and hot water and the, but they're very close together but they never mix and this is how the water is heated. The electric comes into the boiler, live neutral and earth, through a fused spur and 
then it'll go into the boiler via some fuses and then into the circuit board which is the brain of the boiler inside the boiler a number of sensors that are detecting temperatures and various things like whether the fan is spinning and the circuit board will send power to all the components such as the pump the diverter motor the gas valve and it's also taking constant readings pressure temperature and also altering things like the speed of the pump the the gas valve itself the position of the diverter motor if there's a problem and one of the sensors is not reading what the boiler would expect we would get an error code coming up on the display the last thing is the thermostat so there'll be a thermostat on the wall which will communicate with this receiver which all this is is a switch open and closed so when you turn the heating on the switch will be closed when the heating is off the switch will be open so this is just connected to two points of the boiler so you'll get a live signal coming out of the boiler into here and if the switch is open and heating's off there'll be no signal coming back to the boiler but as soon as you turn the heating on the switch will close and they'll send the electric back into the boiler through the other side and the boiler will know to fire for the heating that's pretty much all there is to it